You know, we've been going through this series on spiritual warfare, and remember what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, the Christian life is not a playground. It's a battlefield. And as we consider that, this morning we believe that God wants to lead us in a way as families that we could step into being able to walk into victory. And so we're in this series now, walking into victory, because He's called us to be more than conquerors, more than overcomers. He's called us to walk in victory. Remember we'd been looking at Second Chronicles chapter 20, when the Ammonites had surrounded Judah and Jerusalem, surrounded Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat was in trouble. And whilst Jehoshaphat is in trouble with this enemy that surrounded him, he gets filled with fear and he pushes into the presence of God. He calls a fast and he gets everyone to seek the Lord. He proclaims a fast throughout the nation of Judah. In verse 13, now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. So despite the attack that was going on, he stands before the Lord. Look at verse 14. Here's the difference. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. As they waited and focused on God with the trap that was surrounding them in the mess that they were in, they were able to take their eyes off the storm, off the mess, and put it on the Lord and wait on the Lord. Verse 14, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And the prophecy came out, the battle is not yours, the battle is mine. Position yourselves, just stand. The battle is not yours, but mine. I want to remind you this morning that the key to walking in victory is being led by the Spirit of God. The Scripture says, for where the Spirit is, there's freedom. The Lord said, not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The key to walking in victory for Jehoshaphat, for us, was to look at the Lord and allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead them. The difference was the Spirit of the Lord. And so I want to go through a study on the deeper dimension of how do we allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead us out of the mess that some of us are in, financial, relational, health, whatever the circumstances, because Paul speaks in Ephesians 4 verse 5 and he says there, be filled with the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, be filled. He says, be filled with the Spirit. Now listen to this. Some people get scared about talking about the Holy Spirit because is that going to make me strange or what's going to happen when I allow the Holy Spirit to fill me? Listen to verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Sure, there's such joy in that scripture. As you, as you hear that scripture and read that scripture, be filled and in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Be filled, not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And when you hear the words be filled, Let's recognize that be filled speaks of something that's continuous, not a once off. It's being filled again and again and again, over and over again, with the Holy Spirit. Let's also recognize it's a command. He's not saying, I suggest that you be filled. He says, be filled. It's a command, and it's a command to be filled, continuously filled. And the third thing is, to recognize that God wants His Holy Spirit to permeate every area of our lives. Our thought life, our work life, our relationship life, our married life, our family life. He wants the Holy Spirit to permeate every area of our lives, that we be led by a Spirit in every area. Why? Why does He say that? Because the key to walking to victory is for us to walk in the Spirit. You know, another translation for being filled uh, can be this picture of um, a sailboat. I don't know if you've ever gone sailing before on a, on a lake or out of the sea. I, I, I've been sailing on a lake before or a dam. And um, 
suddenly there's no wind and, and you're sitting there with your sails and there's no wind, you're, you're at the end of your rope, you're stuck in the middle of the dam and the, then the gust of wind comes and it fills the sails and the, as it fills the sails, it drives the boat, it leads the boat in. A, a, and that's the picture of what the Holy Spirit does too. When he, when he fills, he, he fills your sails and he, and he carries you, not, not asking you to work harder, not asking you to try harder, just being filled by the Spirit carries us to the next phase. I believe that God wants us to be filled. And as we think about Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat had learned the hard way of not listening to the Spirit. Remember in Second Chronicles chapter, 16, chapter 18, he had gone to war when he shouldn't have gone to war. He hadn't listened to the prophetic word. And now he's in this place where he's trapped, he's in a mess, he's lost his troops, he's in low resources, he's at the end of his rope, and he goes before God and he is led by the Spirit. He allows the Spirit of God to prophesy and he receives the prophecy, he takes the position. So as we go into this this morning, I want to dive into Romans chapter 8. If you wouldn't mind going to Romans 8 and just let, let's go into Romans 8 and study what it means to be filled by the Spirit Let's have a deeper dimension because we believe God wants us to walk to victory. In Romans 8 verse 1, if I read from the New Living Translation, the scripture says, so now, emphasis on now. Can I ask you to turn to your neighbor and just say, now. now. Because, because some of us are wondering when the breakthrough is coming. So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So, so Jehoshaphat was in a mess. But the Lord is saying to us, if you're in a mess, there's therefore now no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus. That, that no divine judgment for what you've done by God. No, no, no long-term judgment by God for what you've done. This, this mercy is available to you now. So now, now right now, no matter what mess you're in right now, what, no matter what mess you're in a relationship, financial, future, now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He, he doesn't say there, there are no consequences for the wrong things we've said and done. He doesn't say that you won't make any mistakes from now onwards. He says there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 2. And because you belong to him, now look at this, the power of the life-giving spirit. Because you belong to Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Jehoshaphat didn't have that understanding of that promise. And yet somehow he knew to wait for the spirit, the Holy Spirit to speak to him through prophetic words. You have this promise that there's therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus and the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed you from the power of sin and death. It's available to you now. Listen to uh, the New Living Testament for a moment, verse 3. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did not so God did what the law could not do. He sent his only son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Look at this. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. My first point is this. The Holy Spirit leads us, always leads us to Christ. He leads us to Christ. If we live according to the Spirit, He leads us to Christ. And our victory, living in victory, is, is, is in and through being led by the Spirit of God. And I know that there's been so much abuse on the teachings of the Holy Spirit. But, and so therefore, many of us are afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to lead. But consider this for a moment. Jesus and the Holy Spirit were inseparable. Think about this for a moment. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus ministered. 
The Holy Spirit ministered around Jesus. The Holy Spirit prophesied over Jesus through Simeon and Anna. Jesus was baptized and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was given fullness of the Holy Spirit without measure. Jesus was led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said his ministry was a result of the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught about the ministry and the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus commanded his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit on the church. If Jesus, who is the Son of God, who knew no sin, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need the Holy Spirit? Think about that for a moment. The key to walking in victory is being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit always leads us to Jesus, the Word. The Holy Spirit also always leads us to peace. Listen to Romans 8 verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. So don't look to the left or to the right. Just look at Jesus. Those who are led, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, look at this, is life and peace. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, I bless you with life and peace. Life and peace, not just any peace, but the peace of God. Not, not just the Holy Spirit gives you the peace that surpasses understanding, the peace of God. He doesn't just give you peace. He makes you a distributor of peace. He makes you a vessel of peace so that you can walk into a room and shift the atmospheres by carrying the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Everyone else is in chaos and, and fear and high and anxiety. You can step into that room and you can reign in life. He gives you abundance of grace and righteousness that you can reign in life. And one of the ways you reign in life is by having the life and the peace of God. Can you turn to your neighbor again, again and say, I bless you with life and peace. I was thinking about this amazing story of Jehoshaphat, about how, how he puts the, the worshippers in front of the army. No weapons, just worshipping, because they have had revelation of what the Spirit of the Lord says. And when the Spirit of the Lord is there, there's freedom, life, and peace. There's another story in Luke 8. It's the story of uh, the demonic man possessed by more than 6,000 demons. How many of you think you've got issues here? <laughs> okay, I think we've all got issues. And some of us might even think our issues have got so many issues. We have issues. Issues that have issues. 6,000 demons. I think he had a few more issues than you. And Jesus goes across the lake to the other side and he meets this man who's got filled with six thousand demons. His name, the demon's name was Legion. And then in a, a troop of a, a legion, a Roman legion, there were more than 6,000 soldiers. And so Jesus comes up to this person. As this person runs down to Jesus, and he falls at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus, you know the story, casts out the demons which go into the pigs, and the pigs jump into the water. And, and, and then suddenly this man is calm. The town hears about how they've lost all their pigs, 
how they've lost their business. They're not supposed to be in the big business. Uh, the Jewish people not supposed to be in big, big, big business. And all their pigs are now in the water. And instead of coming up to find out this miracle, they're furious that they've lost their business. They've lost their money. And they come up and they find this man who's clothed. Listen to this for a moment. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, the scripture says, sitting at the feet of Jesus, full of life and peace, clothed in his right man, mind, and they were greatly afraid. You see, when you're carnally minded and you're thinking about your business and the pigs have jumped in the water, you can't even see the miracle that God's done, and the miracle of God's provision, God's healing. And if you allow the Spirit to lead you, He brings you to peace in life. And right now, you might feel like you're in a mess. I don't think you're in a bigger mess than this person who had 6,000 demons. And God still brought this person to peace and life. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The Holy Spirit always leads us to peace. The key of walking in victory is to be led by the Holy Spirit. The third point is the Holy Spirit leads us to holiness. Listen to verse 12. Therefore, my brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. He's talking about being separated to the Lord, allowing the Spirit to convict you of what is wrong and convict you of what's right, that leading you into repentance, that you live led by the Spirit rather than led by the flesh. The Holy Spirit leads us to holiness, to be to choose to be separated to Him. I was thinking about Helen's testimony. I, I don't know how many of you have heard Helen's testimony, but I, I just wanted to share a short part of Helen's life. She's a, such an amazing woman. She's really God's daughter. I'm so thankful to the Lord that He chose her to walk beside me, that the two of us could walk as one before the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, when she was very young, at about five or six years old, she was sent to boarding schools to England to fly from Eswatini to England. But later on, when she did university, she went to Edinburgh. And this is what Edinburgh looks like. It's a beautiful university. She went to dental school there and became a dentist. And this is what she looked like when she was at that age. Didn't she look so young? Sure. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful woman still. Anyway, so as she's there, she didn't know Jesus. And um, one of her friends started ministering to her in her last year of dental school. She gave her life to Christ, but she said, you know, whatever happens, please know, I'm not going to be the type of person who goes to church every Sunday. I'm giving my life to Christ, but I'm not going to church every Sunday. <laughs> the next Sunday when she woke up, suddenly the desire in her changed, and she wanted to go to church. And she, Monday, she doesn't want to be like everyone else and go to church on Sundays, but come Sunday, she woke up, she wanted to go to church. And now, look at her, she's a pastor in the church, faithful. Let me put it to you like this. God changes our appetites. God changes our desires. No longer wanting to live for the flesh, but wanting to live for the spirit. This is Helen's testimony. As we delight in the Lord, He gives us the desires of our hearts. He brings about transformation, heart surgery. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, He leads us always to holiness. And as He leads us to holiness, He convicts us of sin and He convicts us of righteousness. He changes our appetites. We want to feed on our flesh, but the Holy Spirit wants us to feed on the Spirit. I like what Oswald Chambers says. He says, holiness... Not happiness is the chief end of man. Holiness, not happiness. There's this happy gospel that people preach. Whatever makes you happy, do that. No, 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 that's the flesh. God hasn't called us to happiness. God has called us to holiness. And some of you might be sitting there and saying, but, 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 but you know, then Christians are boring and, 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 and it's not exciting. No, no, no. In the fullness of God is the joy. In the, in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. There's a big difference between happiness and joy. 
Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is our strength through the Lord. God wants us to carry joy. If you think for a moment, just, just how good our God is. Look me, let me show you creation for a moment. Think about the waves that God created. He wants you to enjoy those waves. Surfers love those waves. Divers, scuba divers love them. God created heaven and earth for you to enjoy. Think about the sunset. This is in Phoenix where Joshua's at. And just look at the beauty of the skies that God creates, that hot air balloons, that planes can go up. God created heaven and earth for you to enjoy. Look at the beauty of the valley of Bulembo. Just for, if you ever get a chance to go there and look at the valleys, God. You know, when we, when we feel, Helen and I, when we feel um, tired, the, the most inspiring thing we do that we enjoy doing is just going and looking at God's creation, just looking at the valleys, looking at the seas. And as you look at creation, you allow the Spirit of God to fill you with a fullness of joy. Look at this next picture of, of Vernon, the general manager of Bulembo, with his son, Josh, on his shoulders, who's now 18 years old. Just this last week, we celebrated his 18th birthday. Let's give him a check. As you look at that, as some of you, maybe you think that, you know, God, that, that isn't a lot of fun. And I, I've seen lots of people come and do selfies here. Have you seen the people do selfies? And I don't know what this thing is about putting their tongue out, but... They, <laughs> They put their tongue out. But for you who don't know, listen, God knew you from the beginning, from the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end. He knew you would do that. So guess what? He created creation to show you. Let me show you the way. Look at this giraffe for a moment. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Oh, God knew you would do that thing. And he's got one better. And if, if you think that his creation isn't fun, just look at this hippo for a moment. Think about a hippo. Just look at this. Oh, <laughs> See, God's got this amazing sense of humor. He wants you to be happy, but he wants your happiness rooted in true joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, not circumstances. The Lord is good, the Lord is love, and he wants you to enjoy him forever. Just thinking about the demonic again, who had 6,000 demons, which Jesus cast out. <laughs> In verse 35 of that Luke 8, 35, the people went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, full of peace and life, clothed in his right man mind, and they were afraid. In verse 37, then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the, of the area asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. And they got into the boat and returned. You see, their flesh was contrary to the spirit. And the spirit is contrary to the flesh. But when you allow the spirit of God to lead you, he changes your appetites. He leads us to Jesus. He gives us life and peace and holiness. Look at Luke 8 verse 40. So it was when Jesus returned, tell your neighbor returned, so when Jesus came back, having left that area, look what happened. The multitude welcomed him, for they were waiting for him. Their appetites changed. There's a shift. There was a heart shift. And I believe that the Lord wants to do a heart shift in us this morning. Holy Spirit always leads us to holiness. And Holy Spirit leads us to our true identity. Look at verse 14. For as many as led by the Spirit of God... These are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit always leads us to our true identity. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knows the plans and the purposes He's got for you. He knows His thoughts for you. Look at verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. See, the Holy Spirit leads us to this identity that we have in Christ. The Holy Spirit shows us the inheritance that we've got in Christ. The Holy Spirit reveals the word of God for us, the promises of God. 
the secrets of God are revealed by the Holy Spirit that we can call out, Abba, Father. Think about the demonically possessed man again in Luke 8. Possessed with more than 6,000 demons. Wore no clothes. He was naked. He, he would break all the chains that they put him in. He's living in the tombs. He's beating up the villagers every time they try to deal with him. He's eating their pets. Can you imagine? He's eating their cats. He's eating their dogs. He's wreaking havoc. But when he turns to the Holy Spirit, listen, when he turns to God, to Jesus, he puts his eyes on Jesus, takes his eyes off the community, takes his eyes off the left, takes his eyes off the right. He takes his eyes off the demons. He takes his eyes off the bondage. And he puts his eyes on Jesus. He runs down to Jesus, falls before Jesus. The Holy Spirit fills him. Listen again. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Those 6,000 demons, you're no longer condemned. It's gone. He leads you to Jesus. He leads you to life and peace. He leads you to holiness. I don't know what mess you're in this morning, but I want you to consider that I believe that God wants to do healing in every one of us here to lead us to victory. Having come to Christ, this demonic, having been delivered of 6,000 demons, you would have thought when he asked if he could come with Jesus, that he could stay with Jesus, that he could burn the boat with Jesus, that he could walk with Jesus, that the, the, the disciples would say, Jesus, let him stay, please. Let him stay. Let him stay in the boat with us because, you know, he's just had 6,000 demons cast out. We've got to walk with him a bit to make sure that this guy isn't going to go back because, you know, if he goes back, it's going to be seven times worse. And, you know, you know how often we say, okay, that person's been through a trial. Let's just walk with him. And it's important that we walk with him. But Jesus had done so much surgery, Jesus said to him, no, he can stay and proclaim my word. I've not just healed him, I'm, I've healed him and I send him to be an evangelist into this community. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Listen to this verse for a moment. Jesus said to the, to the demonic, return to your house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done. So that when Jesus returned, the whole town was ready. I don't know what mess you're in right now. I don't know what financial mess you're in. I don't know what emotional trap you're in. I don't know what health trap you're in. But I can tell you this, that if you're led by the Spirit, you will walk in victory. There's therefore now no condemnation the Holy Spirit will lead you to Christ, to the Word, to life and peace, and to holiness. But He'll also lead you to your true identity. The fifth point is this. The Holy Spirit leads us to be strengthened. Some of you might feel weak right now. You feel like, hey, I don't have the strength. I'm so hurt. I'm so disappointed. I don't have the strength. I can imagine this person who's been delivered of 6,000 demons, how much strength did he have? Emptied. It was very easy for him at that point to feel condemned about his past. Everyone had seen him naked, living naked, living in tombs, living with chains, <laughs> having eaten all the community's chickens and uh, cats and dogs. <laughs> you can imagine what he was going through and the mess that he'd created, how many people he'd beaten up, but there's therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Spirit strengthened him, but the Holy Spirit comes to strengthen you too. Listen to this in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. If you're in a weak area with finances or administration or relationships, here's the promise. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. There's so many areas I have weaknesses. I have to fall on my knees before the Lord and say, Father, I can't do this. But you said, greater is he that is in me, the Holy Spirit, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
You said I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You said you'd give me the mind of Christ. So I'm asking you for understanding in this area or a relationship to help me to have understanding in this area. So Father, I come before you. The Spirit of the Lord will help you in your weaknesses. Allow the Spirit to lead you, to strengthen you this morning. He says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But look at this. For the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Sure. You remember that picture of a yacht that's sailing and it, there's suddenly no wind. And, and then there's no, you, you feel like you're stuck and, and you're weak out there. But one of the definitions of the Holy Spirit filling us is this picture of this wind filling the sails and carrying you forward. Let the Holy Spirit fill your sails and carry you forward. I was thinking about my brother the other day, Patrick, my younger brother. You know, when he was in his young 20s, I won't tell you how old he is now. In his 20s, after he had graduated, he's so brave. He got onto a yacht, um, my dad's yacht, and they sailed it from Durban down to the Cape to Strauss Bay. Um, on his way, all the way across to the Caribbean. Just look at this map for a moment and you see he takes this yacht from Durban down to Strauss Bay. And the reason why they stopped at Strauss Bay is because the waves, the waves were 80 feet tall. 20 meter waves that dented the hulls. And so they pulled into Strauss Bay and, and by the way, for a moment, just have a look at what the storms look like. If you're out in the ocean and you look at this yacht, there's a video clip they're going to show you at the moment. What the, what the yacht looks like as they're going through these waves. Imagine going through these waves. I, I don't think you feel too hungry. I think uh, you might feel a little seasick. <laughs> How do you get strength when you're that? And, and the Holy Spirit will give you strength. They were going through waves bigger than that. They were going through 80-foot waves, 20-meter waves. And then they, they went from Strauss Bay into Cape Town, into Hart Bay, because they went around the Cape of Good Hope. It was, it was stormy. From there, they sailed all the way. They'll show you the map now. They, they, sh they sailed all the way to um, St. Helena, to Antigua, to Tortola in his early 20s. Can you believe it? Let's give him a clap. <laughs> but one of the stories it tells me, there was many times they would sit out on the ocean fishing, waiting because there's no wind. They were in the doldrums. And suddenly the gust of wind would come and fill their sails and they would be able to go forward. I pray the Lord would fill your sails. The Lord would strengthen you to carry you forward because God wants to strengthen you and take you into this next season healed and restored. Paul says this, that Jesus gave the word, my grace is sufficient for you. Listen to this, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast about my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The key to walking in victory is allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to fill your sails. The sixth point is this, the Holy Spirit leads us to intercession. Some of us, we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray for our family or our friends. We don't know how to pray for the, the people that are around us. It's easy to give up. Can you imagine the disciples going across to the other side and this demonic person comes down the, 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 the path filled with 6,000 demons and they're looking at this person coming down with 6,000 demons and they're wondering, how do we pray for this guy? They would not have known that this guy could be delivered. Most of us would look at a situation and look at a person and say, this one's too hard. This one's too far gone. Uh, salvation isn't for now. Salvation is maybe for 10 years time because he's so hard or maybe a year's time or a month. But guess what? Because the Holy Spirit was there, the anointing of God was there. In one day, this person was delivered of 6,000 demons. How do we pray for those people who've disappointed us? We don't know, but look at this. Verse 27. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, 
because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done. This morning, I don't know who has hurt you. And I don't know if you know how to pray for them, how to release them, how to forgive them. But I know this, this demon, demonic came down with 6,000 demons and in one day, God healed him, God restored him, and he became an powerful evangelist. The person, that guy that has offended you, can be healed, can be saved, can be forgiven, can be restored, can be redeemed. And we need a heart like Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads us to God's purpose. My last point. Look at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. To those called according to his purpose. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. God can take the mess of this demonic with 6,000 demons and make it a message that heals a whole town. God can take your mess of your finances, the mess of your, your critical position, whatever critical position you're in right now, God can take that mess and he can turn it into a message. God can take that offense that you have with the person who has stolen from you, who's defamed you, who's disappointed you. God can take that and make it a message. God can take the test you're in right now and turn it into a testimony. It's his heart this morning that we, we recognize in verse 28. And we know all things work together for the good of those who love God. To those who are called according to his, his purpose. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. That's why Jehoshaphat could stand in the temple, even though the Ammonites had surrounded him, and wait on the Lord, for the Spirit of the Lord to minister to him. I pray right now that you will consider if Jesus and the Holy Spirit was inseparable, Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized by the Holy Spirit. If we know that, and we know that the Holy Spirit always leads us to Christ, that the Holy Spirit leads us to life and peace, that the Holy Spirit leads us to holiness, the Holy Spirit leads us to our true identity in Christ as a son or daughter of God. The Holy Spirit leads us to be strengthened. The Holy Spirit leads us to intercession. That the Holy Spirit leads us into God's purpose for us. I believe that God is saying, if Jesus needed the Spirit, how much more do we? Knowing that the key to walking to victory is being led by the Holy Spirit. I believe it's time to go into a deeper dimension with the Lord, asking the Holy Spirit this morning to counsel us, to comfort us, to teach us. Jesus said in Luke 11 verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to the children, your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I'm not sure what you're facing this morning, but I know God does. And I know God wants to take our mess and make it a message. Can I invite the worship team up and can I ask you to stand this morning? I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do heart surgery. Just if you could close your eyes and bow your heads. If you're in a relational mess this morning and you need the Holy Spirit to heal you and restore His purpose, His plans, His identity. Can I just ask you, if you're battling with relationships, can I ask you just to put up your hand, please? Thank you. If you can put your hands down. For those of you who are battling with career decisions and you feel like 
the world is caving in around you. You feel trapped. You feel like the Ammonites and the Moabites have surrounded you. And there seems to be no way out. And you know the scripture. That God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But you seem, you feel trapped. And you need the Spirit of the Lord to speak into your life. Can I ask you, if that's you, could you just put up your hands? Thank you. Pull your hands down. For those of you who are battling with finances and you feel like there's no resources, you, you're like Jehoshaphat, you've got no troops, no resources, and the enemy is stealing, killing, and destroying your finances, and, and you need the Spirit of God to speak into your life. Can I ask you just to put up your hand, please? Thank you. Okay, if you can pull your hands down. As we go into a time of worship, knowing that God gives life, not just life, abundant life, that God reveals love, agape love, that God brings light to darkness, that He's called us to be salt and light. He's called us to carry the flavor of God. He's called us to carry the love of God, to be a light on top of the hills, that people would come running up the hill to find that love, to find that peace, to find that joy. And you want to be the salt to the earth and light to the nations. Can I invite you just to bow before God, kneel before God, either at your chair or at the altar here, inviting the Holy Spirit to come and lead you now. I'm going to ask the ministry team to pray over you that the Spirit of the Lord reveal His way forward. He won't give you the whole plan because if He gave you the whole plan, you might run from it. His thoughts number more than the sand across this earth for you. He can't tell you His whole plan. You would be so afraid to see what his hope, his plans are for you. They're more than you can ask, more than you can think, more than you can even imagine. So through his grace, he won't reveal it all to you. But he will reveal how to get out of this fix, out of this mess, and become a message. Because he is a God of love. And he does want to lead you. So Father, we come before you, and we bow before you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you this morning, please come and kneel before the altar and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. Let the Spirit of the Lord come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.